Biased and idiotic sports reporting. It's a 15 yard penalty. First down. Don't do that, Skip Bayless. <laughs> Hello, oh, America. We are looking at a New Orleans Saints football <clears throat> that our yeah. friend, that our friend in an undisclosed location is showing us right now. And I'm looking at a frozen picture of. Oh, there you go. Okay. And and he has the and he has the koozie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know. We know. You you New Orleans all day long. We know this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Thanks, people. Thanks nation right so, there. Here we go, man. Welcome right. to another episode of You Know Nothing About Sports. I don't know nothing, man. I've, right. Obviously. <laughs> Do you obviously, know something about sports? Do you I know got a bone to pick sports? with you people. Because <laughs> Lord knows I don't know anything about sports. And listen, I got a bone to pick with you people because I picked the Cleveland Browns. So did I. Yeah, I was there. Well, yeah, so I, I I picked them to win the game last uh, yesterday. Last yeah, night. me too. Yeah, I I uh, did that. I didn't pick them to do anything in the season. <laughs> now that I didn't, I tried to tell y'all man about the 49ers, man. When I watched them play, I was like, hmm. I said, if, if if they can stop turning the ball over, man, they got a pretty good team. But do we know that for sure? Like, <laughs> I mean, they, listen, they've beaten the Buccaneers, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Browns. Yep. But, but they're undefeated. Nobody's. Yeah, they're undefeated. Kudos. Kudos yeah. to them, you know. All, 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 all praise to them. But they, had, I'm, you know, they play the Rams next Sunday. Okay. That'll be a good test. I'm not. I'm not saying that's the end all be all because the Rams have issues. Okay. Yeah. I. You know what. You know what. You know what. Be wig. I get it, man. I understand why you feel that way. I can't commit. And, and, and look, that's gonna go into the next segment, K man. Um, my man. Oh, Dex no, no, said, no, 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 no. I want to stay on. I want to stay on this subject. Because <laughs> I got something to say. <laughs> uh, what you, so what you, go ahead, K man. What you got to say, K man? Here's what I'll say about the San Francisco 49ers. Their defense is nice, but it should be nice after picking in the top 10 for the last five years where you get Buckner and Bosa. What's Mm -hmm. the other kid's name? Um, Oh, yeah. I know you're talking about. I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name. You got Quan Alexander. Yeah, you got defensive wise, they are nice. Offensive wise, they they've been hit with the injury bug on offense the last three years. Like, and and let's let's start with uh, Jimmy G, who is paid like an elite quarterback, but plays like uh, arena league football um, quarterback. But you, but you know what, K man, you brought up a good point about the injury bug, man, because. If y'all watched that game last night, when the fullback went down, it kind of changed their offense. The kind of yeah. offense kind of slowed down. What is Cal, Cal Shanahan is under the Mike Shanahan tree, um, just like um, uh, uh, Sean McVay, just like uh, Matt Lafleur, um, Gary Kubiak. I mean, you're seeing it. You're seeing Mike Shanahan's imprints, fingerprints on this league, and the fullback. He loves the fullback. Um, my Denver Broncos, um, the offensive coordinator was the quarterback coach for the San Francisco 49ers last year. They love the fullbacks. Yeah, but I don't know if they have the offensive personnel for me to believe that they are 
what their records say they are. I think the NFL schedule makers had gifted them the first um, five weeks of the season. They still have to play Seattle. They still have to play the, the Rams. Mm-hmm. Now, good, luckily for them, they have um, a losing team's um, schedule, so they're going to play a lot of cupcakes. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> Whole lot I don't of know. Cupcakes. Yeah. But that's my two cents on a San Francisco 49ers. And, and, and look, and the, that was a kind of say, because the next segment I was going to go into. I, oh, I, I'll, say, I'll say one more thing. There are I have this thing I've told people where I call NFL franchises, certain NFL franchises, Tiffany franchises. And the Tiffany franchise, what I consider is a franchise with at least four Super Bowls. The NFL is a very good place. It's in a very good place when the San Francisco 49ers are legit, legitimately good, just like the Cowboys, just like the Steelers. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some other franchises who fell off, the Giants, who fell off, the Dolphins, the team that, not that far from me and Sean, <clears throat> the Bears, the Packers. But so it, it I, I just don't, like Brandon said, I don't believe yet, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling them one thing or the other. I'm not calling them good. I'm not calling them bad I, because I don't know. But I just, at, at this point, I'm having commitment issues. Yes. I, I, I can't commit. Well, yeah. Well, it's like well, me in my well, 20s. Well, <laughs> well, be weird. Um, that being said, are you still committed to your Cowboys after Dak said y'all were feeling yourself a little bit? I'm, yourself? I'm, I'm committed to my team regardless. Um, now, I'm, if, the, if the question is if I'm still committed to them making the Super Bowl, I am. Because the NFC is just that wide open this year. I mean, it's 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 that wide open. A lot of there's a, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good teams. There's a there's a lot of decent teams. There aren't that many like god awful teams in the NFC. True, very true. Yeah, I give you that. I give you that. One. And then K man, you another another little nugget, man. K man, you brought up a good point, dude. Those names you rattled off, the head, those head coaching names you rattled off, Shanahan, McVay, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, Brandon, you, you, y'all both probably going like this. Do you know at one point all those guys, who all those guys were working for? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Employed. We, I know exactly who they were employed by, where they, <laughs> where they went to every Monday through Friday, one Ashburn, Virginia at. <laughs> the address is one Redskin Drive. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, okay, let, 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 let me pose a question to you guys. Then. That being said, how does that make Daniel Snyder look as an owner to let those guys go and then see the success that they have now? What you what, what you think, Kate? Man, how do you think Daniel Snyder? Well, feels? it's <sighs> okay. So. It makes him feel bad because as a as a um, head coach, now I mean I'm sorry, as an owner, you don't deal with the the positional coaches all that time. But you know, it is this is you own this, and you should be around enough or have the wherewithal to know like, okay, I I like what this position group is doing. I like what the quarterbacks is doing. I like what the tight ends is doing. Who is that young kid coaching the tight ends? Oh, we just promoted that young tight end, that the tight ends coach to be our office coordinator. Huh. This kid looks good. But but the r- real problem is it's the individual he has in trusting this football operations. He doesn't have an eye for talent. So how can he tell the, his boss, maybe we should get rid of this guy and keep this guy? What you think, B? I just think it... It, it validates what we already know about him. I mean, it's it's no <laughs> he doesn't listen. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to fire anybody else good for us to think that he's a bad owner. Everybody knows he's a horrible owner. So I mean, there's it just it just validates everything that we know about him. Let me give you an example. Um, in nineteen what was it nineteen eighty? It's like eighty one. The defending NBA champion, Los Angeles Lakers, started off on a, a lull. 
and they fired their coach, uh, Paul Westhead, or I think it was something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was now it was Magic who said fire him, but Magic saw in the young assistant, this guy is the guy who should be leading us. Now that young assistant was Pat Riley, and Dr. Jerry Buss was smart enough to see that himself, and then he was, Showtime was born. Yeah, man. And the, mm-hmm. the sad thing is, man, Daniel Daniel Snyder doesn't know football. That's all. That, that, to me, that's what it boils down to, man. He, he doesn't, doesn't know. know he, don't. he doesn't know football. He doesn't love football. He's a but, he's a he's a businessman. But he doesn't know people either. Mm-mm. If you knew people, you know a leader. You know an up and comer, especially if you see him. I say. Be gen- generous. 150 days out of 365. Now watch. Their next head coach. It's going to be somebody everybody knows. I mean, yes. people people are throwing out the, the offensive coordinator for uh, Kansas City. They're throwing out his name. And, I mean, he'll probably get an interview. Eric, but Eric me. Yeah, he'll probably get an interview. But let's be honest. Uh, it's got to be flashy. It's got to be a splash. They're mm-hmm. probably going to get somebody good. But you know what's going to happen? He's gonna catch the same cancer that every one of those, every 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 one of the staff that he's had that Dan Snyder's hired and let go, he's gonna come in and catch that same cancer. As long as Dan Snyder's there, as long as Bruce Allen's there, it's gonna be the same outcome. Yeah, man. I will, yeah. Go ahead, Kim, man. I will say this one thing. Under his 20 years at the helm, he's only he's never really hired a football guy to run their football ops. Like that Scott McClellan, he was there and it it was working. And maybe if they would have, you know, let it continue, maybe something would have happened. But he still answered to that idiot. If he, I don't know how it would be, how, how it would look like if a football guy ran it. Because let, let, let's be 100% honest. He ain't the only, I mean, he is the worst, probably the one of the worst owners in football. But if you have proper football guys, and sorry, Sean, I'm going to say this. I was talking to somebody today, and they were talking about Tom Benson was very, very cheap. And he messed up a lot. But he got Mickey Loomis yeah. as his general manager. Right. Uh, in Indianapolis. That dude's a fiend. But he had good GMs, mm-hmm. and, he got one, and he got one right now, and you see what they're doing. Yep. So if you hire someone – and you empower them to run the football operations as they see fit, it might be a different story. I don't know. But he's never done that. And he won't. <laughs> no, he won't. He yeah, won't. he won't. He he's he's a to me he's a control freak, man. And if you if if you just listen to other players that have been on the team and they say when you go into the Redskins locker room, it's like, uh, oh well. We yeah. Just hear. yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> and you know it's funny is because Bruce Allen came out and, and said the locker room culture was actually pretty good. Yeah, after, yeah. Uh, damn, nope. After damn the good. Five- <laughs> it was damn good. <clears throat> <laughs> Look, <laughs> let me, listen, man. You ain't got <laughs> you ain't got to come out and lie about your culture. You ain't, listen. Everybody, everybody knows the truth. Everybody knows the truth. That franchise is in disarray. It has been in disarray. It will be in disarray. I as heard Dan Snyder's at the top. But I that was funny. Deshaun Jackson, heard... Jackson said that, man. Deshaun yeah. Jackson said that when you go in the when you go in that locker room, you can tell it's, it's like guys don't want to win. <laughs> hey, a couple of current players are snitching to Josina Anderson from ESPN saying that one player was is on Snapchat. During practice, and he and the play and that player who's snitching to him, he's like, "Hey, we all know who we talking about." And so everybody's like, "Oh, Josh Norman." <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. And then like, and then they always talk about the Bama skins. How you think those kids feel? Right. I spent, I spent three to four years with Nick Saban, at the most professional organization in college sports, and I and I get drafted to this. Yeah. And I go to a worse situation than I had in college. Oh, I mean, I'm getting paid now, but is it worse? Right. <laughs> I mean, let me, let me phrase that. I'm getting paid, you know, on top of the table, not under the table. All right, man. <laughs> right. So this next topic, man, we, we, y'all were saying some good stuff earlier today about this topic, this Richard Sherman thing, man. So do y'all feel that 
it was disrespectful for Baker Mayfield not to shake the guy's hand. What you, you go first, B. Way? What you think? The thing is, I saw the video, and <laughs> you know, it really don't look like he snubbed him on purpose. It just looked like he got. I mean, it is. It, it looks more like Richard Sherman snubbed him, exactly more so than Baker snubbing <laughs> Richard Sherman. Baker was looking at him. Baker was facing him. Sherman was the one that didn't look at him and walked by. So, it, you know, I, <laughs> I love, I, I, I don't love Richard Sherman. I like Richard Sherman as a player. I, I like him as a, you know, an outspoken individual. He's a smart dude, really, really smart dude, well educated. Mm -hmm. But he, he got it wrong on this one. He got it wrong on this one. I'm, I'm sorry. He got it wrong on this one. I don't. I don't fault I don't fault Baker Mayfield in this incident. I fought Richard Sherman because it from the video it looked like it, Richard Sherman it, it looks sketchy. Snubbed, uh snub Baker Mayfield. What you think, K man? Look, on the 49ers official Instagram, in this Insta story, they got the video. And Richard Sherman walks past the kid. The kid <laughs> is shaking everyone else's hand. Right. Exactly. And, and he wasn't snubbing you. But I, th but here's the thing. What I think what Richard Sherman did, he used that to mm -hmm. gas up his team. Yeah. This dude, when he shake my hand, he gonna come in our house, disrespect us. Oh, we yeah. gonna show him. Hey, Joey, remember what they did against y'all when you were at o uh, Ohio State? Right. Come on, man. And it, I think they used that. Yeah, I, I think they did. <laughs> and and Baker is a perfect. He's a perfect foil, because. Yeah. He has a massive chip on his shoulder, and he should. This dude was a walk-on at Texas Tech. He, I mean, he's six foot nothing. I mean, and then he got all the way. He took his team to the the um, um, football championship tournament. He won the Heisman Trophy. He was the number one overall pick because he believed in himself. So he's very cocky and very sure. But it rubs some people the wrong way. And Richard mm -hmm. Sherman is an is a is a clever and savvy vet, and he used that. And that's my point, K man. That's why he did. From when I was reading everything and I saw the video, I said, "Oh, I know what this is about. This Richard Sherman gonna hype the team up." Because if if y'all listen to him doing a pregame when he be um, doing a pep talk, oh man, come on, man. Yeah. As he just like I said, he's smart. He is. He's very smart. Smart dude. I see him being a defensive coordinator somewhere on later on in his career. Because I can see him coming up with some pretty good defensive Oh, schemes. I got actually something better than that. I can see him running the NFLPA. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Either that or politics. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. All right, so... Week five, man. What what stood out for y'all during week five? What, what stood out for you, K man? Uh, week five. What stood out to me? Um, a couple things stood out to me in week five. One. Uh, I think we're gonna save this for a topic because I think we we uh we, I'm just gonna make a little bit short of it, but uh I know we brought this up, but. The New Orleans Saints. That stood out mm -hmm. to me. I like the way they're playing. But we also have in another segment to talk about the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Another thing that stood out to me, the Chicago Bears. I was never that impressed. I, li I like their defense. I don't, think, I don't even think they're as good as the 06 defense of the Bears. They're not as good as 02. Um, 02 Bucks, 2015 Broncos, 2000 Ravens, that 07 Giants um, defense. But they need to be because that offense ain't nothing. That's what stood out to me. All right, B-Wig, what stood out for you, B-Wig? Uh, a couple things. One, um, keeping it close to home, the Cowboys got exposed. Um, they uh, There was a recipe used by Matt Le Matt LaFleur Matt LaFleur Fleur. to to expose the aggressiveness of our linebackers and the uh the unwillingness 
of one hundred million dollar man, Demarcus Lawrence, to shed blocks and make tackles. Um, <clears throat> number two, I love what the Colts did to the Chiefs because it, it they they used the recipe that I that I felt would work all along: physical line play, physical defensive play. It worked all night long now you know Mahomes is, it, it, Mahomes is a special dude Mahomes. Mahomes is a special dude he's gonna make one or two plays you know in any game that's gonna make you go ooh ah but they got manhandled on Sunday night loved it hey Bill Belichick showed you the blueprint in the AFC championship game on how to deal with them and that's and he did that with a healthy Mahomes who's not healthy uh you know uh, the baby arm breaker yeah. And, and a healthy thing. offensive line. What yeah. stood out for me is the same thing about the Cowboys be weak. I, I, I was, I, I'm not going to say I was shocked by the way the defense played, but I was like, okay. Hmm. I said, that that can be your Achilles heel. Then number you know, two, would you say be weak? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead well, I was going to say number two, what stood out for me was the um, 49ers um, offense and defense. But, Oh yeah. One one thing I was I would say about our defense is I was that I, I saw a red a red flag was raised for me week one against the Giants with what Saquon did, how how Eli was kind of moving them up and down the field in, in the first half. That raised a red flag for me and ever since then, ever since that game, it's been downhill. The Miami Dolphins were moving the moving the ball up and down the field in the first half Absolutely. against our defense. That was that was another red flag. So I'm not I'm not, I'm not totally I'm not totally shocked at what at what transpired on Sunday. But what I am shocked about is how they got they 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 basically got what the Colts did to the Chiefs. That's what Green Bay did to us on Sunday. How does Aaron Jones have four, four tutties? <laughs> I mean, our defensive line is not a, there ain't no slouches. Their offensive line is not, they're not world beaters. No, they're not. <clears throat> they're, they're average to good. And they, they made our defense look like little boys. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a hundred percent surprised by the defense, but if they want to make the playoffs, they need to get it together. Wow. Hey, oh, one one more little nugget that stood out for me, man. Um, Christian McCaffrey, the man went off. Why is he not in the MVP conversation? I don't know, man. I think he will um, be after last week. Uh, Michael Wilbon said something in my rare occasions of watching ESPN that I watched, and he actually said that Christian McCaffrey. I sent y'all that that screenshot of yeah. the, mm-hmm. all the dr- and he was drafted. Um, eighth overall. The only reason he was drafted eighth overall because of the color of skin. Mm-hmm. Because normally white guys don't do that. Yeah, he he point. is putting that team on his back. Yeah, just like Saquon before Saquon got, got hurt. Everybody is keen on him, keen on him, and he's still doing work. Still and dominating. If, and, 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 and I'm gonna tell you now, if Christian McCaffrey keeps it up, man, he's gonna smash the um y'all some scrimmage thing, man. Cause he's mm-hmm. on that pace right now. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. has it? Uh, what Priest Holmes or something like that? Or is it Marshall Falk? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's probably Marshall Falk. I think it's Marshall. It, I think it Marshall. I think Marshall ran for a thousand and caught a thousand. And caught a thousand. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. So let's let's double back because you brought up a good point, K man. The Sean Payton thing. Me being a lifelong Saints fan. Die Hard Saints fan got got the Fleur de Lee tattooed on my arm. I've never known how much Sean Payton gets paid. Never known. For some reason, for Saints fans, I, I don't know if it's a big deal. But I do think he's undervalued and under. I'm okay. Let me rephrase it. I I, I think he's undervalued. But yeah, when you. When you talk about when you hear the the big name head coaches mentioned in the NFL, the first name and rightfully so, the first name that comes out of 
everybody's mouth is Bill Belichick. Yep. Um, you don't hear as much about Sean Payton, and I don't, I don't know how because what he's, what he's doing, what he's been able to do in Drew Brees' absence. Let's be honest. When the Saints, when Drew Brees went down week two against the Rams, when he went down, the air was let out of the, the air, the, all the air was let out of the room. All the yep. oxygen just got sucked mm-hmm. out of the room. Everybody left the Saints for dead. Everybody said Saints ain't making the Super Bowl. Uh, write it off. Even even me and Kennedy were telling you, Sean, y'all should just go ahead and tank. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just go ahead and tank. You know, Breeze is done. But, but man, Sean Payton has not only he, – he's not only created a game plan, a winning game plan for Teddy Bridgewater. He's also rallied his defense. Because y'all's defense, y'all defense through the first three weeks of the season, y'all defense wasn't all that. No. Yeah. Coached by Dennis Allen. Yeah. Y'all defense wasn't all that. But now, and I mean, they, they could have played better on Sunday, too. <laughs> but he's he's got them fired up. He's got them playing with confidence. A lot of times, confidence overrides skill. If you got a confident dude out there, you know, that, that can make all the difference in the world. What he's, a, what, what he's been able to do, really, just over, over his body of work, man. His whole his whole body of work. Yeah, he doesn't have the hardware to 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 back it up like a like a Bill Belichick. But when you talk about you know the top top two top three coaches in the NFL, yeah, he's up there, man. Sean is like you know Sean like one B from Bill, one yeah. B or number two. So yeah, he's severely undervalued and and, and underrated in my opinion. What you think, yeah. K man? All right, so I'm going to pick it back on what um, Brandon said. <clears throat> so when they talk about the coaches in the league, they always, they, of course, they're in rightfully so. They should talk about Hoodie. But then it will jump to Andy Reid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. 20 years of nothing. I don't. Andy Reid is a Hall of Fame offensive, quarter, quarter, uh, offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach. Mm-hmm. Sean McVay has been doing this for five minutes. Right. In this all past offseason, all these NFL owners went out and went out of their way to hire anybody who's had a sandwich with Sean McVay or shook his hand after two years. Yeah. But no, they don't want anybody on Sean Payton's staff. Yeah, that's true. That's a right. good point. You that, that's that is so true. Let me that go his so story. Let me go historical, and I want Sean. I want you to uh, chime in. In uh, I don't know, sixty years, seventy. It was like fifty years of the Saints. They were trash. They had <laughs> they had their ups and downs, but essentially they were trash. This man came there in '05. Yeah, it was like '05. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look what th- that team is. Like I like. Normally, you see people pumping their chest for the Cowboys. I have seen more Saints fans in the last 10 years than I've ever seen of anybody else's fans just come out of the woodworks. Because this is what that man has done for that city, that region, and gets no respect. And I will I will end this on, on this. If those refs did not screw them last year, they would have went into the Super Bowl and they would have beat the Patriots. And yeah. when I mean beat, two touchdowns. I'm putting yeah. it two touchdowns because Sean, because uh, McVay, Belichick had a great game plan for him. And he didn't know how to adjust. Right. All Sean Payton does is adjust. See, McVay, yeah. he's he's smart. He's extremely smart, but he lacks experience. Yes. Sean Payton has McVay's mind with the experience, with yes. all the experience. And, and Sean, I, big, oh, a yeah. big shout out, big shout out to uh, to Bill Parcells. We don't talk enough. Exactly, about I was about Bill, to say that. We don't talk enough about the Bill Parcells coaching tree. I know, but right? But if you look at you look at his tree compared to Bill Belichick's tree. <laughs> I mean, Bill Belichick's well, tree. Here's the here's the thing. Uh, Bill Belichick's under Bill Parcells' tree. Yeah, right. Right, but he, he's not treated. He's not treated that way. 
He's he's not treated that way. You don't. I mean, you 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 see all the Super Bowls and stuff. People forget. People forget that he came he came off the left branch. Sean Payton Sean Payton came off the right branch. And so yeah. did Tom Coughlin. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Hey, look, that's one thing. Cause, cause you know, you know, before he came to the Saints, you know what head coaching job he wanted, right, Bwig? He wanted out. He wanted to coach. Out. He wanted to follow up Bill. Yeah, Jerry wasn't having it. Yeah, no. Jerry wasn't because, having it because he knew Sean. Look, Sean Payton is that is that headstrong, give me control, give me say so kind of guy, and Jerry wasn't having it. No, but wait a minute. But didn't didn't Parcells kind of have that when he was a Cowboys coach? That's yeah. why they clashed. That's why he didn't stay there long. Right. Remember, Parcells was there to clean up the mess, which he did. Yeah. But then Jerry wasn't having any fun anymore because Jerry didn't have that control because Parcells bought the groceries and he cooked the meal. But Jerry wanted to go back to buying the groceries. Right. Hmm. That's okay. All right. Wow. So you so you so you think that's Daniel Snyder's problem? He wants too much control? Daniel Snyder's problem is he don't love football. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really he doesn't love football and he won't hire anybody smart enough who does know football. This dude wants attention so bad. He bought a studio. He bought um he bought Six Flags, ran it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> remember that. Remember, he bought that and ran it to the ground. Wait, 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 Johnny Rockets and bought and, and ran it to the ground. This is awful. <laughs> the dude is awful, but I don't understand why no one just comes to him and say, "Look, if you just sat back and let a real football guy run the show, maybe you might have success." And if that success turns into a Super Bowl or two, you could walk around here like Robert Kraft. Go down to Florida, get some nice little <laughs> massages. Ain't, no, ain't nobody gonna tell Snyder that. He, he, he gonna be like what you, he gonna be he gonna be like the president. You're fired. Get him out of here. <laughs> Man, he could he could be just like Bob Kraft, go to Russia and have Vladimir Putin take your ring and look you straight in the face and tell you go home. <laughs> Yep, you're exactly right though. Boss move right there. Yeah. Took your ring and just said, "Right, it's my round." Yeah, man. Just, but, no, better yeah, than Debo, <laughs> Robert. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I I agree with y'all about the Sean Payton thing, man. I agree with y'all on that one, man. Yep. All right, so I got one. I, I I got one more subject. One more subject. It's been on my mind. I was just reading across the screen. I'm watching. By the way, they're showing the Cowboys and the Packers right now. <laughs> but oh, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, what you call him? Just got his second concussion of the of the season already, man. She yeah. Shepherd for the Giants. Oh, Sterling Shepherd. Yeah. So. I, I think we touched on it one time before, man, about players getting injured. Shouldn't somebody pull these guys out and say, hey, man, you need to just sit down for a while, you know. But I I don't think I don't think he should play. I, I, I And I get it. I, I Just like you said, you guys want to see the best players on the field. You want to put butts in the seat. But injuries, like, who who is that? Look what happened to um, Rudolph. Right. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, for my Broncos, um, uh, Devontae Bosby, dude said today he was paralyzed for 30 minutes. Wow. Ooh. And it was, and it was a friendly fire hit. <clears throat> what you going to say, B-Week? Um, you say, shouldn't, you know, shouldn't somebody come to these dudes and say, hey, you need to just sit down for a while. Um. Do you know why boxers keep getting back into the ring over and over and over again? Because number one, they make good money doing it. Number two, they're they love what they do and they're addicted to what they do. A lot of times for a lot of these players, all they have ever known 
their entire lives is football. You take that one thing away from them and they're nothing. A lot of these dudes don't have anything to fall back on. Nothing. A lot of them leave college early. They don't go back, complete their degrees. So it's 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 hard. It's 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 really hard to make to make somebody or to tell somebody, hey, you should sit down for a while. You know, this is your, you know, umpteen concussion or whatever. Now you do have you do you do have this this movement of of players that has ramped up in recent years of of players exiting the league early mm-hmm. due due to you know the the studies and the links you know with uh between football and the CTE and all of that mm-hmm. you know there there is there is hope for players from that standpoint you know you just you hope a player you you know just does what's in the best interest of him but it's this is a this this is the most this is the most competitive sport on earth right. and you have a lot of you have a lot of coaches that'll do what they can to to win do whatever it takes to win you have owners that'll do whatever it takes to win and make money so you know and this we we've had this conversation before yeah you know it's it's unfortunate that it keeps happening but for a player like Sterling Shepard who's 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 gone through this pretty much every year since he's been in the league he's he's dealt with concussions every yeah. year they're 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 stacking up on him so yeah. for for a player like him you know I, I don't i don't know you know if it's if it's if it's worth it to keep doing what you're doing but you know so 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 let me pose another question that what you just said be weird should there be a concussion limit like if you, if you've been in the league with five years and you've had four concussions should they be like hey hey man why don't you take a year off i don't know because a lot of times you still got you you still have players that aren't being honest with trainers yep you still yep. got dudes you still got dudes on the sideline passing protocol tests and you know they still seeing stars they still blacked out and so there's i, don't, I mean I, I i like that idea but I don't, I don't, I don't see how it will work. Well, let me ask you this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask both of y'all this question. Then we're going to go on to the picks. Be with K-Man. Would you let your sons play football like it's being played now? Or would you tell him, hey, man, look, I don't want you to get all them hits in the head. Why don't you um, look at playing tennis or golf? Uh, you go ahead, K-Man. I- I would not. <clears throat> um, when they, whoever came up with this this game of football, I don't know, 150 years ago, I don't think they imagined individuals that we have today. That's right. <laughs> who Good run point, four, man. who run four two, four three, four five, and wave somewhere between 200 and and 250. And they're just coming at you like a car with all this equipment on. I don't think they imagine that. And right. and it's just going to get, you know, it's evolution. It's just, they're just going to get faster and stronger. And it's just going to be, it's going to be a problem. The NFL needs to come to the realization that, one, they need to invest in better equipment. But they need to come to, a, like, there's some people... This game, I mean, I think the game of football is going to be around, but I just don't know how popular it will be in the next 10 to 15, even 30 years from now. Right. Because of the lack of interest. And it will, it, I don't think it will be this bad, but could it be how Americans look at USA soccer for the men? Yeah. What you'll, what you'll see, I think, later on, like, you know, five to 10 years down the road is you'll, you'll begin to see less talented players coming into the league um more of these guys that are getting cut during training camp more of these guys that you know are are passed up in the draft you know it's going to take more of those guys to fill to fill in some of these empty spots that are that are you know that are going to start being left open by players that by guys that say it's just not worth the risk anymore 
So, B. Wick, you didn't answer the question, B. What? Did What's you let up? your son play football? Oh, oh. nah. Because it's nah. <laughs> it's it's too nah. it's, it's it's too much. And nah. even if even if I wanted him, even if I wanted him to play, uh, I'm I'm married to a uh very, <laughs> very very small but uh intimidating <laughs> woman. You know, five seven, buck ten when she, when she you know got Tim's and a goose coat on, uh, <laughs> but um, you know she ain't she ain't having it. Even I don't I could argue yeah. to him blue in the face. She yeah. ain't having it. We went to we went to her nephew we went to her nephew's high school game two weeks ago two Fridays ago, and even now in high school, dude, the offensive line. You got kids, you got kids on the offensive line in high school, 6'3, 6'4, 6'5, 280, 290 pounds. Yeah, man. Hey. And and you know, her her nephew, her nephew, he's a slot receiver. He's uh he's you know, pro what, five, 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 six, buck thirty, buck forty, maybe. Man, be weird, K man. Have y'all seen Sean Hagler's son, the youngest one, Ryan? Yes, yes. he's huge. <laughs> huge. <laughs> last time, last time I saw Ryan, he saw he was like, "What's up, man?" I look, I said, "Man, what the?" I look up and... <laughs> last time I saw him is when Sean had, you know, they, him and his brother would got into the fight in like '06. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and Sean took him home, and then I, I see the picture. And I'm like, oh my! Dude is wow. big, dude man. Is a, he, he's a mountain, man. Mountain. He, Ryan is a Ryan is a he mountain, play, dude. He, he played. He played for William and Mary. Because <laughs> I was dude, like, he, yeah. Because when I see him, you know, he'll laugh and kind of joke with me. And then when I when I really actually looked at him and shook his hand, I was like, God, <laughs> like a mitt. Yeah. 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 Man, but I. Let's 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 go to some picks. Alright. Alright, so I just heard that Sterling Shepard will not make the trip. Will not play Thursday night, which is, I think is a good thing. Good. Because they're playing um the Giants playing the Patriots. Who you got, K Man? Come on, I got the Patriots. Yeah, I don't know why. I got the Patriots. Who you got, B? I got the Patriots. I'm not I'm not sure they'll cover. They they're uh they they're giving them seventeen points. I'm not oh, sure they'll cover, no. but uh, they'll they'll win the game. So, yeah. so what? Let, let me let me ask you this right quick. What are y'all impression of Daniel Boone? Who? Daniel Boone, the quarterback. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. I know, man. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you got a cool skin you know hat. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I haven't. I haven't sat down and really watched him. Um, but my my first impressions are he's a he's a baller. He ain't scared. Yeah. He he's awesome. not he's not scared he's not scared to throw the ball. And that's that's something you see with a lot of young guys. They come in timid. They come in trying to you know be perfect with the ball. No, nah, he lets it fly. You know. So of what I've seen of him, you know, he's I wouldn't go. To, I wouldn't necessarily call him impressive, but. Yeah, I think he's he, a smart. He looks smart. He looks like he decision making, but then again, you know, coached by David Cutcliffe for four years, went to Duke. Right. I just don't know if he, I don't think he can make all the throws. I and, think it'll. I think it'll come with time. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, because man, because all, all the uh, Manning camps he went to, man, you know, I kept, you know, I, some some of my people in New Orleans was talking about the guy, and I'm like, I'm like, who is like, like, damn, like who is this dude? Yeah. Then when I found out he was playing at Duke, I'm like, oh man, nobody's gonna pick this guy. Duke quarterback, come on now. Huh? But when I watched him in college at Duke, he he was pretty good, man. He he can throw the ball. He's got an arm on him. He looks better than Dwayne Haskins. <clears throat> Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins raw. That's his only issue. That's you know that's comparing a four a three year starter to a dude who only played fourteen games. Dwayne Haskins needs a good coach, man. That's all he needs. But here's the problem with that. But here's the problem with that. And we might get into it later, but whoever comes with the, whoever is their coach and they're going to pick high. What if they mm-hmm. say they don't want Dwayne Haskins? What if right. they say, I want, I want 
if, and if the Redskins are bad, what if I want Tua? What if I want Jake Fromm? What if I want uh, the Love Kid? What if I want that's, Herbert? Yeah, that, that's Herb, yeah. that's what I that's what I was kind of getting at. I think maybe like two, last week, two or yeah, three podcasts week. ago. Yeah. yeah, I don't think and and being that being that Jay Gruden's already gone, I don't think I don't think he's I don't think he's safe there. I really believe no, that he's if he's the I, I believe I believe this. I believe that if the right guy, if the right guy comes in, he's gonna he's probably he may push to trade him out of there. Listen, they're gonna pick in the top five. Yeah, that's for sure. That much is obvious. Yeah. They're gonna pick in the top five. There are more than five quarterbacks mm-hmm. ready to go, warmed up and ready to go in the, in this upcoming draft. So. You know they gotta play him now, play him now. See what you got. Yes. Absolutely. See what you got in him. Play him now, because you're gonna be picking in the top five this upcoming draft. If he's not what you, if if he doesn't, if he doesn't display any any growth, like something that you can potentially work with in the next off season, mm-hmm. get a pick, get an extra pick for him. Draft one of these studs coming out. Right. Uh, pull up, pull up Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. I right, yep. be wigged. This next game, man, uh, Carolina at Tampa Bay. Who you got, B? The Panthers. I like the defense. Can't nobody stop Christian McCaffrey. That's what it seemed like. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you know, and uh, what's the guy's uh, – Josh Cal- – Josh, what is his name? What is his name? I can't even remember the quarterback's name. Kyle Allen? Kyle, Kyle Allen. Allen. Yeah, Kyle yeah. Allen. Yeah, he's, um, he's a baller, you know. Tampa Bay's defense, they, they don't scare anybody. Give me the Panthers. Who you got, K, man? Um, I really want to pick the Carolina Panthers. But I pick the Carolina Panthers because I think their offense, their defense will slow down um, Bruce Arians' offense. And uh, Kyle Allen's doing it enough, and, and they'll ride the hand of uh, Christian McCaffrey. So I got the Panthers. All right, all right. I'm, 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 I'm taking the Panthers too. Um, Seattle at Cleveland. Who you got, K man? Oh, I got Seattle. <clears throat> um, Pete Carroll knows how to design the defense, and Frank Clark is, and that defensive line is going to have fun with that, that really bad offensive line. And this, you know, so funny. Remember three. Four years ago, Cleveland had Joe Thomas. They had what was the center who's now in Atlanta? Oh, um, gosh, I can't, I can't think of his name right now. But they had him. Has they had a they had a great offensive line, but no really skilled players. Now they got skilled players, but an awful offensive line. So I got Seattle. You got B. Yeah, give me Seattle. Alex Mack is his name. Yeah, Alex Mack. Yeah, but yeah, Seattle, and, hands down. And I, I and I hate to say it, man. I'm going with Seattle too, even though the game is in Cleveland, man. Dog pound. All right. So this game is going to be a shootout, I think, man. Houston at Kansas City. Who you got, B? Mm. Man, this. Wow. You see, you, you can't use the you can't use the Kansas City's at home excuse no more uh give me the texans bro give me the texans deshaun watson I, you know you're right it's probably gonna be a shootout oh but yeah there's, there's a re- there's a reason why kansas city is only five point favorites in this game the kansas city i mean uh houston has the they have the explosive offense to keep up they do and they also they also have a running game they have a physical defense Give me Houston. Who you got? Who you got, K man? Man, everything is looking in um, Houston's favor with the offense, the defense, um, Kansas City with the injuries and missing skill players. But I'm going to take Kansas City because Houston's coach, Houston's coach by Bill O'Brien. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Houston, man, because. I've always liked Deshaun Watson, man, even when he came out of Clemson, man. So, all right. Why is this game at 1 o'clock? Yeah, really? That's my problem. 
It and should look, be the four twenty five game. It, Listen, you, you, they should have they should have taken they should have taken us out of out of the four twenty five slot because nobody's gonna watch that game. Nobody's gonna watch us beat down the Jets. They should have took that game, put it at one o'clock, and put this put the Texans and Chiefs at four twenty five. This is this is a type of game that in the, the NFL should be like like put a big spotlight because this is featuring the future. Yeah. Exactly. It is fe- it is featuring the future. Two African American quarterbacks, young, twenty both drafted in the same class, both around like 24, 20, 23, 24 years old, the future of this league. Why did who's game do this? This game should be this that 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 game should be the Sunday night game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. All right, two, man, so, two young studs, man. One of which yeah. hasn't hit puberty yet. Yeah. Uh, I, this next game, man, I'm gonna watch it because it's gonna be on TV. Um, <laughs> Red, Red, Redskins at Miami, man. Who you got, Kate, man? Uh, uh, the Redskins are the closest. Yeah. So, who who you got, B? Toilet Bowl 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me the Dolphins. I ain't got no reason to pick the Redskins. <laughs> the Dolphins, the Dolphins, the Dolphins have a better, the Dolphins have a better quarterback. There, there's your reason. There you go. Boom. God, I was going to say, are you are you picking the Dolphins out of spite? <laughs> I mean, I, I very, I could be, I very well could be, but um, the, the Redskins haven't given me a reason all season to pick them to win a game. Look how far these two franchises have fallen. That right. played in uh, so the eighty-two and eighty-two uh, Super Bowl. Look how far they have fallen in third, almost forty. Oh God! <laughs> look and look, man. I, I feel even bad. I feel even bad about Miami because they went undefeated and won a Super Bowl. The only team that would do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I will say this, and then we move on. I will say this: the uh, the Redskins players might be hyped up to prove a point. You know, since, yeah. Uh, since their coach got fired. Yeah. So. I'm still picking the Dolphins, but just I'm I'm just throwing so, it out. So wait, 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 wait a minute. What what point are they going to try to prove? It's all it was all Jay's fault. Yeah, that that Jay was the scapegoat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Let's move on, man. Cause y'all funny, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, Philadelphia at Minnesota. Who you got, B? Mm, that's a good game. Um, wow. Damn, yeah, I. Wow. Give me, I'll take the Eagles, just cause what? I, yeah. Give me the Eagles. I feel like I feel like Carson Wentz is playing better than Kirk Cousins. Give me the Eagles. You got K man. I got the Vikings. <laughs> the Eagles defensive line is not good. Their secondary is even worse. Minnesota proved me wrong. Delvin Cook is gonna run up and down on them. The last time, and, the last time we Minnesota, said that the Vikings lost. And Minnesota, <laughs> and Minnesota got a, a a good defense. Look, Philly's not Philly's not where they need to be until they start making some trades. All right, and they are going to be making some trades because they need D line help and secondary help. Yeah, but I, I, I just feel like I feel like that arrow is pointing up. I feel like Philly's arrow is pointing up. But you know what, man? It's funny that you say that, B Wig, because. About two weeks ago, the Cowboys were in console possession of first place. Now y'all tied with Philly. Right. Um, that's a that's gonna be, that's gonna be a wild division, then, man. All right. Yeah, it is. All right, we got the New Orleans. We got the Saints versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was I'm gonna tell you, man. I was at a tug of war for this one, but I I'll tell y'all why afterwards. Who you got, K man? The Saints. Saints, man. Who you got, B? Saints. Ooh, and I'm going to tell, tell y'all why I was at odds with this one. Because for the simple fact, like I said, man, my homeboy, my purple knight brother, Leonard Fournette, plays for Jacksonville. So I, I want to see how he play against the team he was growing up rooting for. But, you know, I always I always had that dilemma. You know what I'm saying? If you a player yeah. and you grew up in a city and then you playing for the other team, do, do, you, do you do some point shaving? But I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. Now they are they are gonna have to score some points. You know, one thing 
Jacksonville yeah. can't Jacksonville can't stop anybody, but they can't put points on the board. Yeah, Minshew. Yeah. Give you that one. All right. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati at Baltimore. Who you got, B? Baltimore. And it's, it's in Baltimore too, man. Who, who you got, K man? Baltimore. Yeah, I don't see Cincinnati. But, but it's not gonna be a blowout. Cincinnati's gonna play them tough for at least three quarters. Yeah, rarely do you find a rarely do you see a blowout in the AFC North. But but getting you notice well let me ask y'all this. Then we'll move on. Do you guys think Lamar Jackson took a step back last week? Mm. No. No, I wouldn't call it a step back. I just think he's learning. Yeah. He's just he's just experiencing bumps in the road. Now Sunday, watch him watch him this Sunday because this past Sunday, the way they won that game, because he he played horrible. He was yes. horrible Sunday. So on Sunday. By the by virtue of the fact that them them winning that game, I think that's gonna do that's gonna do wonders for that locker room. That's gonna do wonders for his confidence. I expect him to play a much, much better game this Sunday. But I mean he's just he's just experiencing growing pains, that's all. He's he's having to adjust because look, defensive coordinators are adjusting. They're you know we're we're past the we're past the quarter mark of the season. Yep. There's a lot of film out. Defensive defensive court good defensive coordinators are uh, are taking away what you do well. Hence why our record is three and two right now. So you know he's he's just he's just having to adjust. They just they're just adjusting. He's gonna have to adjust. All right, good point. Good point. All right, man. So. This game is kind of going to be interesting. We we kind of touched on this game earlier. San Francisco at Los Angeles. Who you got, K man? I got I got the 49ers. Ooh, we had to think on that one, didn't you, bro? Because the last time I saw the Rams, they did not look good, and they have. They had the recipe to beat the um the Rams. Um the 49ers had the recipe to beat the 40 um the Rams. They have the defensive line that's gonna make Jared Goff and Todd Gurley uncomfortable. But they also got the run game to attack um that's that really not good um defensive line of the Rams. So and I think play action pass. Yeah, I got the I got the 49ers. Who you got, B? Give me the 49ers as well. Jared Goff's not playing well. Um, a few podcasts ago, I said I made a point that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't a good quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo is playing better than Jared Goff this season so far. Jared Goff has as many interceptions as he has touchdowns. Jimmy Garoppolo is completing 69% of his passes. Jared Goff's completing 59% of his passes. Um, I like I like San Francisco's defense better than I do Wade Phillips right now. Yep. Yeah. So give yeah. me the forty give me the forty niners. Yeah, I'm taking the forty niners too. All right. And and I will say this for the Rams. Um after the, you lose, um just call, you know, uh, the Denver area, area code and give up a two and a three uh for Emmanuel Sanders and Chris <laughs> and Chris Harris. <laughs> and you'll be good. You'll be good. Stop trying to get rid of your players. Stop trying to think. <laughs> Mm. Look, played a long wow. game right here. We played a long game. <laughs> yeah, it's, look, it's a long uh, season, man. But right, long man. season. Oh, yeah. and if you give us, a, and if you give us a fifth, you can get Derek Wolf. Oh god! All right, man. Oh, at, this is Atlanta at Arizona, man. Who you got, B? Gosh. Ooh, man. Uh, I don't. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, little man in the Cardinals, man. They said little man. Oh, yeah. my Atlanta, dude. They, uh, they. I just, I don't, I don't like that team at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I don't like any aspect of that team. I like they're, team. they're way, they're way too talented to be one and four. But they are because they routinely get hit in the mouth and they don't punch back. Yeah, I so, that one. Who, Cardinals. Who you got, K man? I got the Atlanta Falcons, and I got them by ten points. What? 
Yeah, because yes, they do get routinely hit in the mouth. The problem is the Cardinals have no one to hit them. They gonna so, find a way. No, no, they won't. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons will comfortably win this game. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm taking Arizona. All right. That's the surprise when that one came in. All right, uh, uh, Tennessee at Denver. Who you got, K-Man? Should I ask? So this is a he's dead. He's picking the Titans. In a heart <laughs> decision. Hey, look, well, look, flip a coin. My head says I need them to lose. Because they, <laughs> they feeling themselves right now. And that's hurting my 4-12 and 12, uh, prediction I want to put up. My heart, of course, says they're going to win. I actually think they're going to win this game and for the simple fact <laughs> that the Tennessee Titans are not playing well. Yeah, they're not, man. They're not playing well. And they don't score enough. Uh, the Denver Broncos will come out as they did the last couple weeks. They will put up points in the first half and then disappear in the second half. The problem is Tennessee don't score at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, the, now, I will say this about those two last two games for the uh, um, Denver Broncos. They played a beat-up um, uh, Chargers team, and they played uh, Jacksonville without Jalen Ramsey. The Tennessee Titans got a defense, but I think this game is going to be like how I thought last week's game between the Titans and the Bills is going to be. It's going to be a slugfest, a lot of running. It's going to probably be a really fast game, too. So, But I got, uh, unfortunately, I got the Broncos winning. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got I got the Broncos as well. Uh, both of y'all picking the Broncos. Yeah, I got I got the Broncos as well. I'm pretty much I'm pretty much picking anybody that's going against a disciple of Bill Belichick. That coaching tree is not good. <laughs> no, it is not good. It, it is not good. Mike Vrabel, man, I, I don't know. Like, how how do you go from you know, one game away from the playoffs to to this. Like this team looks like a shell of itself from last year. I think they they Mariota's not a good quarterback, man. I just don't when he came out of Oregon, man, I didn't see all the hype about him, man. I was like, uh but yeah, I am I'm, I'm I'm also taking Denver, man. I was just messing I'm taking Denver too. But uh, I will say I will say this about the coaching tree and how weak it is for Bill Belichick. Remember last year. Josh McDaniels should have been the Indianapolis head coach. Mm-hmm. But he turned it down because, oh, I don't know if Andrew Luck's going to play. Frank Wright was like, there's only 32 of these jobs. I'm taking right. this job. Exactly. exactly. And, then, and then Andrew Luck did play, and they had a good season. He comes into this season, Andrew Luck's not playing, but he's still having a good season. Yep. Yep, yeah. the guys got stones. Yep. All right, so this game, Dallas at the, at the Jets, man. Who you got to be with? Listen, I need, I need to make an announcement. <clears throat> Jason Garrett, if your team does not win this game by at least 14 points, you, sir, need to go sit down somewhere. You put on this facade on Sunday, getting all fake angry, acting like a little girl, throwing a throwing a challenge flag he at, that at the feet down. of a rep. Look, if you're going, if you about that life, throw it on the rep. Like hit the ref with it. Don't throw it at his feet. Hit him with it. If you're really about that oh, life, hit do him. like that. Do like that ref did that uh, uh, Tennessee Titans player all those years ago and, and messed up his eye. Yeah, oh, yeah, his eye. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, if I'm I'm I'm, pick, I'm picking us to win. But if we don't win by fourteen, by at least fourteen points, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> Who you got, K man? Man, the Jets are getting back Mr. Mononucleosis himself, Sam Darnold. I got the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm taking the Cowboys unless, like you said, Mr. Mono come back and and do something spectacular. Well, but listen, uh, it's gonna uh, spectacular. You mean coughing everybody, <laughs> get them all sick? <laughs> Oh, it's it's gonna is I guarantee you it's gonna be a close game though. I guarantee. That's not good. 
that's that's not good because they're not good. Right, I know. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see what what number twenty six do do for the Jets, man. You know, he got his quarterback back. So. Right, and um, I'll uh I'll see if 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 Tyron Smith comes back this week. I don't know, you know, there's optimism that he might be back this week, but what is you your buy? Huh? What is your buy? Is it next week? Is he the? I want to say is no, nah, it's not. It's not next week. Oh. Uh, when is our buy? Yeah, it's not because this this week Buffalo, yeah. Chicago, Indianapolis, and Oakland got by. It's it's in um, it's in two weeks. Oh, because if I say if it was if it was y'all buy, I will say don't play them. Yeah, they no, their pass rush ain't gonna do anything. It's in two weeks. Did the the, 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 the Packers pass rush wasn't supposed to do much? But they did. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes back to it goes back to our coach. Yeah, it goes back. It goes back to our coach getting these guys prepared to play. Getting them ready to play. Yeah, man. Preparing them, preparing them for battle. Leading them into battle. That's what he sucks at it. There was some there was some questionable calls there, man. Play calls. I mean, I, don't I, I'm done. I, 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 look, I'm, I'm, I'm in total agreement with Dak said, man. Dak was like, yeah, I think I think we were feeling, I smelling myself a little bit too much. Yeah, and that's because of your lame duck coach, who allowed you to to feel yourselves after beating three cream puffs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? I I want to. I'm changing my I'm changing my NFC Super Bowl pick right now. I had I, I had hope, I had optimism, yeah, but. Jason Jason Garrett Jason Garrett is going to be the coach for the rest of the season. Yep. We're not. We're he's not taking us anywhere. He's not taking us. And I'm a, I'm gonna leave that. I'm taking us out. I'm gonna leave the slot open for a few weeks until I see a team that I like. But it won't be us. All right. All right. So the Sunday night game, man. Pittsburgh at the um at the Chargers, man. Who you got, K man? Ugh. <laughs> Chargers. Wow. Who you got B? The Chargers the Chargers better win this game. Is oh. Mason is Mason Rudolph coming back or is he still? He's oh still here? No. no, 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 no. Who cares? No. <laughs> if uh the the Chargers need to win this game for their coach. Cause you know, as good as he had as 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 good as he had the team playing last year, you, you know, we 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 don't we don't last that long when we start losing games. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they need to, they need to, they need this, to, this already, they need to turn it around for the coach. There's already turn around ter- for Lynn. There's some turmoil over there, supposedly, that the Chargers are supposed to be going half on the stadium with LA and the uh, with the Rams, and the Rams are saying that uh, these these people have not paid any bills. But then again, why would they pay any bills? Because they're they're playing in your stadium. They're broke. Right. It's the reason. It's the reason why the why the Raiders went to Oak. I mean, to Vegas. They're broke. Exactly. Oh man. All right. So uh, the the Monday night game, man, is an old traditional ma- matchup, man. Detroit at Green Bay. Who you got, B? Green Bay. Really? Yeah, really. Who you got, K man? I got Green Bay. Wow, but okay. but there's something I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I know uh, NFL directors, NFL um, game directors, I've noticed it. They keep catching every week some kind of riff between uh, Aaron Rogers, Rogers and Le- and look in the floor. It's just like. And I'm gonna say this about Aaron Rodgers. You've been in the league how long? You've been won how many MVPs? Why do you still need a coach calling you plays? I don't understand that. That's like a little. He, he doesn't want. He doesn't want him calling plays. He, you know, he he wants to run the offense out there on the field. It's it's Lafleur that that enforced that um kind of that policy in the offense. Yeah. You know he's I, he's he's force feeding this to down Aaron's throat. Aaron wants to call the game from the field. Yeah, but yeah, but, you know, but, it, you know. but isn't isn't the floor the head coach? 
Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, wow, he, okay, man. Well, because let's be for real. Uh, now, you know, Terry Bradshaw used to always say this all the time. I call my own plays. And a lot of that has gone away from the quarterbacks calling right. their own plays. But I, I've i watched Drew Brees. He don't call all the plays. But about 40% of it he calls. Brady calls about 20%. Right. But it seems like Aaron Rodgers is only calling maybe at the most 5%. If that. Well, and, well, K-Man, to your point, I know for a fact with the Saints, Sean Payton to have a play in his head that he calls. Drew Brees has a play in his head that he calls. The Saints call two plays in the huddle. Mm-hmm. So when they go up and you hear them quarterbacks say, kill, kill, kill. Yeah. They're going to they're right. switch to the whoever... Whatever the quarterback sees, okay, Sean Payton's play is better. Kill mine, kill mine. Let's go with this one. But, right, and I don't think that I don't think Aaron Rodgers has that option. And for his stature or the stature that the media has given him, you would think he would have that option. Right now, going back to going back to the game on Sunday, how many times did you see Green Bay get in the hurry up? Just think back. Like, how many times did you see Green Bay going to hurry up? Can't remember. Can't remember, can you? Yeah, no. Because it, it wasn't that much. I, it, didn't say, I remember seeing them doing it like maybe yeah. three, maybe four times, maybe. If, if that, three three or four maybe is, is, is maybe being nice. That's because of, that's because of the handcuffs that LaFleur has on has on um, Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. But, man, yeah. but look, if you – I pay attention to expressions, man. If you look at, you know what, you you might be on something. If y'all look at Aaron Rodgers' face, even and when they score, language. even yeah. when, even when they score a touchdown, he just has he's like, yeah. Listen, is he, we're is all he happy? all three of us. All three of us are married, man. The it's the times when she doesn't say anything is when we need to be most afraid. Exactly. Yes. It's the times that she doesn't, that she doesn't say anything is when we know something there's something there's something up yeah. there's something brewing. <laughs> yeah, something is up. Yep. It's, the, it's the same. It's the same way with these two guys. It's the same way with Aaron Rodgers. He's he he's pretending to be happy, <laughs> but deep down inside, he knows that you know they could be doing a whole lot more. They should be undefeated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I and I'm I'm pretty sure you guys you guys this this is this is my parting shot my by the way so do you think that if if you have a quarterback the caliber of like Drew Brees um, Aaron Rodgers do you think you do you think you need a head coach because they they because from what you guys are saying they can be the coach on the field we don't need to pay a head coach. Yeah, all, but, we need, uh, all we need is a quarterback and a defensive coordinator. Yeah, because yeah, you, you need you need somebody yeah, need, that need coaches. You, yeah, you need somebody that can manage the other fifty two guys on the roster that is not your star quarterback. Right. You need somebody you need somebody that can manage a team. That's that's an overrated aspect yeah. of um of being a head coach is managing fifty three totally different personalities right and and you know bringing it all together and making it work yeah you got to have a coach yeah look at you peyton know. manning as great as he was he called all, all his plays i think if he had better coaches he had he might have more rings because he was good enough to take a team there but in the big game you need that coach there you need that coach with that design and to see something just two people looking at the same thing and they might see different things. You need that coach's eye there. Yeah. Now, that's that, that's what the whole thing around Aaron Rodgers and Troy LaFleur. He said, and people were saying that's why they go back and forth because they're both competitive guys and sometimes they see things differently on the field. But so I don't people, think... Go, go ahead, I, man. I don't think LaFleur has the the stature to go at this dude. That's the problem I think they're having. I think you are a first-year head coach. You were, as a coordinator, you were only a coordinator two years. The best you've ever done was a quarterback's coach. So you're telling me 
a dude who's been in a Super Bowl, one Super Bowl MVP, one uh, um, NFL uh, MVP. You're going to tell me what to do on a – I think that's the problem. I, yeah. Great point. Good point, K man. Good point. Good point. Yeah. I I I gave my parting shot. What what what's your parting shot, B Wig? <clears throat> let's let's give some let's show some MVP love to two dudes who are not being talked about in in MVP race. I mentioned one of them earlier, Christian McCaffrey. The other one is Russell Wilson. Can we just can we just go ahead and stop stop playing and you know okay let's we we know the obvious dudes we you know you got you got Brady even though he's not putting up he's not putting up Brady, he's not putting up Brady numbers but because he's catching he's catching them they're 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 undefeated they're still undefeated so his name will be there you got Mahomes his name will be there by default you're not hearing anybody talk about McCaffrey you're not hearing anybody talking about Russell Wilson let's put Russell in there man. He's playing. He's 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 doing Russell things. He's playing well. Yeah. All right. Good shot. Good shot, B. So, what what's your parting shot, K man? My parting shot is um, something we could probably talk to talk about last next week because we're running over. Um, um, we mentioned in our text about teams, NFC teams that might miss the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, it's. It's starting to look like the NFC is the most dominant conference compared to the AFC. And I don't know if I don't know if it's personnel, I don't know if it's coaching, but NFC teams look just better. The eye the, the eye test. They just look better than some of these AFC teams. I agree. I guarantee I might I might go along with you because the AFC only have two teams really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, two teams: New England and Kansas City. And how many how many defenses in the AFC can you really say are really you know dominant defenses? Yeah, I know what the Patriots are doing, but they they really haven't played. They haven't played. Yeah. You know, yeah. The Bills to me seem like the yeah. best defense in that conference. Yes, the right. Bills got a legit defense. Yep. But you have more on the NFC side. You have more good defenses, right? That's a good so. point. That's a good point, man. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. One. But now, that's that. That is a good topic for next week, man. Let's wait till next week to see how the how the teams play this Sunday, this week. Then that'll be one of the first topics we'll bring up. All right. Yeah, that's a yep. good point. All right, man. All right, my good people. America. All right, buddy. America. Uh, Riva Dirty. Sayonara. Ciao, Taylor. <laughs>